Hey guys, welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be talking about five different things that you need to know about your expander. If you're anything like me, you did absolutely no research and kind of were just thrown into this whole journey of having an expander on and now you're kind of stuck with it in your mouth and you need some guidance. So I am here to help you out. As always guys, make sure you hit that subscribe button as well as that notification bell so you get notified every time that I upload a new video. Alright, let's get right on to it. So first on the list, I wanted to talk about your first few days with having your expander on. It is going to be a little bit weird, a little bit uncomfortable. You are going to have a, a speech impediment now. It's something that you can't avoid, unfortunately. But those first few days, I can say, are going to be... Um, the hardest for you and over time you will be able to get used to it and kind of speak better and kind of just get your flow back. The easiest way to get comfortable with your speech again is going to be to sing your favorite songs in the shower, in the car, just wherever you're out and about. Um, I promise you guys it is going to get a lot easier to speak with it. It's just those first few days that are very weird, very awkward and you feel like you're just kind of shutting down and you're just like, why me? Why me? Um, but I promise you guys things will get better over time. Another thing that I noticed the first few days of having my expander in is my tongue would constantly want to touch my expander, play with it. Um, but you guys remember that it is a metal object in your mouth. It's freshly cut, I would say. So it's very sharp. So it can uh, scratch up your tongue, cause some sores, and it is just very uncomfortable those first few days. Uh, someone did recommend you can wear a mouth guard. I didn't personally do that. I just kind of try to not touch it as best as possible or as best as I could. Um, but of course, just like with having your braces on, your tongue has to get used to having that metal in your mouth just as your braces or excuse me, your lip has to get used to having braces on. So over time, that metal will dull out and you won't notice as many cuts and scratches on your tongue. Um, you just gotta give it some time. Okay, so for number two, you're definitely gonna wanna learn to take smaller bites of food while you're eating and also you're gonna wanna eat a lot slower. So if you're a person that tends to eat really fast, you're gonna definitely have to learn to, you know, take it easy, really chew your food, um, and really make sure you're concentrating on not choking. So with that being said, let's move on to number three, which is gonna be uh, some of the food items that I've noticed are not the best to eat with your expander on and if you are going to eat them just make sure that you're bringing the proper aftercare for those situations which i will also explain in a bit so what i've really struggled eating are things like nuts tough meats noodles uh lettuce um and cheese definitely cheese so with those things, for some reason, for nuts, when you're chewing them, they get stuck in your expander, in like the little cre crevices of your expander, and it's very, very painful. So if you don't get those out, like, immediately, it's just going to keep bugging and irritating you. As for tough meat, same thing. It kind of gets notched up into those little areas where it's really hard to scrub, um, so you really got to get in there with a toothpick. So by tough meats, I mean things like steak if you cook your steak super super well done uh which no hates you guys if you like your steak that way i prefer mine a little bit softer which you might want to try now too eating a steak uh, medium rare is going to be really really easy for us to chew um but yes if you're eating steak super well done um just anything over well done super dry is just going to get stuck everywhere and it's just it's just very uncomfortable and if you're not prepared for that situation just know that you're probably going to have a long day of trying to get it out of there and it's very very annoying. Noodles is also another thing that I really struggled eating for whatever reason I'm constantly choking on my noodles. So if you don't cut up your noodles into smaller bites before you put it in your mouth I've noticed that a noodle will kind of hang over my expander and go down my throat. So as you can imagine, the noodles just kind of halfway down my throat, halfway stuck in my mouth on top of my expander. It just causes for a very, very awkward situation and extremely scary. I know the first few times that it happened to me, I, you know, you don't want to be in that situation where you're choking. And especially if you're out in public, now you have this noodle halfway down your throat and it's just, not fun at all, you're coughing it up, you're trying to grab it out with your hand and it's just something that I really recommend avoiding at all costs, especially if you're going out on a date, if you're going out to dinner with your family, your friends, it's just skip the noodles, get something else. Another food item that is really difficult to eat is cheese. The cheese just kind of, same thing as the noodles, it'll get stuck above 
your expander and it will cause you to choke. I don't know if it's just me, maybe I'm just eating too fast or for whatever reason I'm just that kind of person that likes to choke on my cheese. <laughs> but in all honesty, I really really recommend avoiding cheese as much as possible, especially in public, just like the noodles. <laughs> Alright, so for number four, we're going to talk about oral care. So this is really, really important. I always carry mouthwash and toothpicks with me at all times, especially if I know I'm going to be eating something. Again, for those situations where you're eating something that you might not think would be getting stuck in your expander, but for whatever reason, it does. When I'm done eating, I like to rinse out my mouth with a little bit of water, and then I'll kind of go in with my toothpick and get all the nasty, gunky stuff that got stuck in my expander, in my braces, and then I will go in with some mouthwash. You can bring a toothbrush with you, but I feel like that's a little bit excessive, bringing a toothbrush, the toothpaste. I feel like just having these two things right here has just made my life a lot easier, um, but you can bring your own toothbrush if you like. So for number five, we're going to talk a little bit more about your expander and having to do your turns on your expander. Um, so I 100% recommend asking your orthodontist for an extra little key, something that you can hold in your purse, in your car, just because before I had an extra key, I noticed that I would always forget it if I was traveling somewhere, if I was just going out of state, just doing something where I wasn't in my house that night and I had to turn my expander that night. Um, just having that extra backup in my car or my purse or just somewhere that I know I'm always going to have on me. It really helped me out a lot and it really helped me stay on track with my expander turns to make sure that I never missed one. So with that being said, I wanted to talk about keeping track of your turns as well. So you can put it in your calendar on your phone, you can have a little notebook. You can also put it on a little calendar in your room so you can write in every day you plan on turning your expander for the amount of days that your orthodontics said you have to do. So for example, for me, usually my orthodontics appointments were four to six weeks apart. And so for example, if I had to turn my expander six times within that time period, I would put, I would mark on a calendar like every Friday, turn your expander, turn your expander, turn your expander, turn your ex turn your expander until your next orthodontics appointment and then you know just cross off the dates cross off the date that way you see if you forgot to cross off the date obviously you forgot to turn your expander um so you want to make sure that you constantly keeping track of that calendar and making sure you're getting all your turns in so you're not delayed in your process of getting your expander removed which i know we are all waiting for right <laughs> Also another way you can keep track of your expander turns is going to be setting alarms on your phone. So the same thing as the calendar, just put alarms in instead. So around the time that you're usually home, you're going to be in the shower, you're getting ready for bed, set yourself an alarm saying turn expander, that way it'll go off. But the only thing is you just cannot forget, don't hit snooze and walk away and say oh I'll do it later. Because trust me, you will forget, just do it in that moment, have someone do it for you, just get it over with, trust me things happen and you forget. All right, you guys, that is it for today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed it and learned something about your expander. Um, if you guys have any more information that you guys wanna share, make sure you guys leave those down in the comments below. I'm sure we all wanna know. Also, make sure you hit that like button if you enjoyed this type of content and I will talk to you guys soon. Bye.